Hey guys, it's Dr. Sarah here. Today on the She Found Motherhood podcast, I'm chatting with one of our favorite prenatal dietitians, Noelle Martin from Nourished Beginnings Pregnancy. Today, Noelle and I are talking all about fourth trimester nutrition, focusing not just on nutrition, but also the importance of hydration and rest. Many of you know Noelle from her Instagram account at Nourished Beginnings Pregnancy. Some of you may not know that Noelle actually has an excellent online course that takes you all the way from pre-pregnancy through to postpartum. If you're interested in learning more, we'll include the link in the show notes below. Her program is called Your Nourished Pregnancy, and Noelle has generously extended a discount code for our listeners. Simply enter the code SFH20 at checkout for 20% off her course. Now we'll get into the podcast right after this quick message. Welcome to the She Found Motherhood podcast. We are doctors Sarah and Alicia maternity physicians and moms who have been through it all. We want to empower you with knowledge so you can have the best pregnancy, birth, and postpartum experience you can. She Found Health and She Found Motherhood is meant for general medical information only. The content of this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. This information does not apply to every situation. If you have questions or if you've received different advice, please contact your healthcare provider. Always seek the advice of your physician or another qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. The views expressed by She Found Health and She Found Motherhood and our guests are not representative of any of the institutions with which we are affiliated. Some of our podcast episodes are sponsored so that we can keep getting great info out there to you, our listeners. We only partner with companies that we truly believe in. Some of our links and suggestions may be affiliates, and we would appreciate you using them to help fund this important work. Now let's get to it. Okay, Noelle, welcome to the She Found Motherhood podcast, or I should say welcome back. Oh, thank you. It's lovely to be back. (laughs) We love having you. And thank you actually for reaching out about this super important topic. So today, Noelle and I are talking about postpartum nutrition, just after seeing, I think, how much need there is for more education. And Noelle was saying she was getting lots of questions, right? Yes. Yes. I think we focus so much on getting the body ready for pregnancy and nutrition during pregnancy, which is incredibly important. But it's very important that mom is nourished well after pregnancy as well, both for herself as well as if she's breastfeeding. But sometimes the focus then shifts to like nutrition for breastfeeding. And if a mom is formula feeding, she still needs that incredible amount of nutrition after. She's just grown a tiny human and birthed it. (laughs) <laughs> and is sleep deprived either way, whatever the form of feeding is, right? Yeah. So I just, I really want to focus in on what mom needs during this time in order to really replenish and be well nourished. Oh, I love it. And I think, you know, you highlight a really good point. Alicia and I have been saying since we've started this community, She Found Motherhood, we've learned so much about what we don't know. Like, you know, and in terms of like the importance of like language and inclusivity, you're right. We sort of just focus everything towards thinking all postpartum people are breastfeeding, but they're not, but they still need that nutrition. And, and like you said, the three big things we're going to talk about today, nutrition, hydration, yes. and rest, no yes. matter how you're feeding your baby, you need those yes. three things. You need these things. Yeah. And I will highlight throughout a few nutrients where if you are breastfeeding, you'd want to focus a little more, but we are going to be very inclusive of just every mom because the focus here is is on mom. Awesome. Okay, let's get started. What do you want to talk about first? Okay, well, let's chat a little bit about the nutrition side of things. So one nutrient that uh, I really want to highlight is iron. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons behind this is the DRI. So like the recommendation for iron drops. And it drops for what they say during lactation. So there's not really a lot of conversation around this. So number one, during birth, Mm -hmm. you are going to lose blood and there's iron in your blood, right? Mm -hmm. You continue Mm -hmm. to lose blood thereafter Mm -hmm. and you may come out of pregnancy a little bit anemic because Mm -hmm. baby takes a lot of iron every day in third trimester. Yes. So although technically the DRI drops, we want to really think logically about the fact that iron is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have enough iron to replenish what you've lost, whether you're breastfeeding or not breastfeeding, you need to focus in on some iron rich meals, especially in that first three to four weeks, because you're already going to be sleep deprived because you're up Mm -hmm. all hours. And if on top of that, your hemoglobin and your ferritin is low, 
then you're going to be even more tired yeah. because iron is important for hemoglobin that carries oxygen to your body and your brain and myoglobin that carries oxygen to your muscles. Mm -hmm. So that awful lethargic feeling of low iron does not help with everything else going on. We also know that postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety are more likely to be worse mm -hmm. when we have this low iron, right? Yeah. They just build. Yeah. So getting iron rich meals in, but that's, that's so easy to just say. <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so I know you've chatted on the podcast before a little bit of kind of getting ready, but I am going to speak to it a little bit because it ties in. Mm -hmm. So any iron rich meal that you are either making or someone has offered to make for you any time in, in that last little bit of pregnancy, having a double batch is great because you can have it as a meal then. And then let's say it's a lasagna you can then have it in your freezer for during postpartum. So anything that you can do to prepare ahead of time in those double batches is really great. I also highly recommend continuing with a high quality iron supplement for at least three months, if not six months post-birth. You, you really, yeah. even though menstrual cycle is gone for a while, we can't guarantee it, it could come back after three months. Sometimes yeah. it does, right? Sometimes it's longer, but iron is such an important nutrient. So that's a big one is planning ahead for meals that are rich in iron and continuing on that high quality iron supplement. If you're wondering, you know, do I have low iron? Is this something I need to check in on? Don't be afraid to ask for blood work. Absolutely. Stay on top of it, advocate, let your healthcare professional know kind of how you're feeling. Just really advocating. It's very easy to get focused on is baby okay? Is baby gaining weight? Are they peeing enough? Are they yes. pooping enough? Do they look like the wrong color? And then to forget like, oh, wow, I don't feel good. Right. Yeah. So yeah. just encouraging moms to advocate for that and get iron in. Also a reminder that vitamin C helps to enhance iron absorption mm -hmm. from iron rich foods, especially plant based iron rich foods we would want that enhancement for. And so pairing things like oatmeal with strawberries or spinach with mandarin oranges, right? Combining yeah. those is really great. Dried apricots, uh, dates, which actually can help with breast milk production as well. If someone's struggling with production, dates really help there and they're a good source of iron. So that, that would be kind of within that area. Another thing is just getting enough calories in. Yeah. So I recommend planning to eat in a similar way that we talk about eating during pregnancy. So every two to three hours, planning for a snack. And within this, I would encourage new moms to accept the offer for help in ways that help them in, in eating every few hours. So if someone says, like, can I help you? Now, during COVID, we're not even having them over to hold the baby. But yeah. outside of COVID, that's often what it is, right? Can I come and help? Can I, can I, can I hold the baby? Yeah. When in reality, I would encourage you to say, can you pick me up uh, a tray of cut up fruit and a tray of cut up veggies. And I really love this energy bite or muffin recipe. Yeah. Would you mind making that for me? When people offer to help, don't be afraid to ask for help in these really practical ways. Because if you have some cut up cantaloupe and an energy bite right there, you're going to eat it. Yeah. But if, if, if you think, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I don't have time. Like the baby needs to be fed. And then this, sometimes you have other younger kids at home and you've got lots going on. And before you know it, it's been five hours and you wonder why you don't feel well, right? Oh, absolutely. So setting yourself up for just those little things every once in a while. I don't really like to call them meals and snacks. I like to call them nourishment opportunities. Yeah. Get some energy, some protein, and some brightly colored fruits or vegetables. Get a little healthy fat in there as well where you can with almonds or walnuts or some avocado or guacamole dip. And just consistently provide your body with energy because you deserve it. As a new mom, yeah. or as a for like, you know, 5, 10, 20 years mom, whatever, however long you've been a mom, you deserve to nourish yourself. And if I could, you know, leave with just like one big statement, it would be advocate for your, for your health and your nutrition early on yeah. and get into a habit. We were talking before. You don't even remember what you ate. No. I don't add, I don't right now either. Like you no. will forget, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. But the earlier that you can get into that routine of realizing it's like the oxygen mask on the airplane. We put that yeah. on and then we put our kids on. And if we are well nourished, right? And getting into that habit. In terms of healthy fats, I mentioned before, yeah. DHA and EPA are both really important during this stage. So we'll talk about EPA first. EPA is a type of fatty acid that can be converted to hormone-like compounds in the body. 
that help with reducing inflammation, they help with mental health, they help with heart health. And these are very important for mom during this time. Right? Yeah. And then if we look at DHA, also very impactful on mental health, but very important if a mom is breastfeeding to be able to pass over to baby mm-hmm. for brain and eye development during pregnancy and during postpartum. So getting salmon, mackerel, some skipjack tuna in a few times a week, or turning to a high quality supplement. Plant-based omega-3 fatty acids are wonderful. They have their place, but they don't give what we really need in terms of DHA and EPA. They can't be converted as efficiently as we'd like to see during this stage of life. So prioritizing that part of nutrition. And then the last piece that I wanted to mention, and then maybe you have a few questions that I could answer under, yeah. under the realm of nutrition, is that healing piece. Yeah. Right? So we're not yeah. just nourishing ourselves for energy or for what we're passing to baby. We're healing. So protein is very important. So incorporating that into each nourishment opportunity, plant-based protein or meat-based protein combination of, it's fine. If you're going with plant-based protein, remembering that there are only a few plants that give us all the essential amino acids our body needs to move forward with the protein that the body needs to make to put towards Mm -hmm. healing and everything else. Yeah. So quinoa, soy, hemp hearts, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, a few others can give us that. But for the most part, we want to be doing something called complementary proteins. And so we take a grain and pair it with a bean, lentil, nut, or seed, and then you have a complete protein. And so I really enjoy working with vegetarian and vegan moms during pregnancy and during this postpartum time where protein needs are higher mm-hmm. and helping them see you know, how they can get that nutrition. I'm often asked about protein shape. They can be part of a healthy diet postpartum. You just want to make sure that you have a high quality one and that you truly understand how much protein is in a scoop, what new other nutrition might have been added in there, make sure there's no additives. So just that discerning eye and not just grabbing a protein shake because just saying like, do I actually need this? Yeah. And then in terms of other nutrients for healing vitamin A, is really important. And getting that through beta carotene rich fruits and vegetables is wonderful because beta carotene, not only can it be converted to vitamin A, but it's also an antioxidant. Mm -hmm. And we can't really take too much. With vitamin A, you can go over the top. With beta carotene, you can't. So pumpkin, carrots, sweet potato, kale, these are great foods to have as part of, it can be part of a smoothie. It can be that they're roasted, they're mashed, they're part of a soup, part of a muffin. Pumpkin muffins are lovely, but getting that healing nutrient in. Um, Vitamin C is pretty easy, right? We we typically get enough vitamin C. You do not need to supplement with that. The body can only use so much at once anyway. So strawberries, oranges, tomatoes, peppers, and then vitamin E and things like wheat germ that you can sprinkle onto your cereal or put into a muffin or walnuts, almonds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. These are great sources of of vitamin E. So those were some of the main ones that I had thought to go over, but I'm happy to answer questions that you think the community might have. No, I think that's so helpful. And I'm like, oh, reassures me. I have a pretty balanced diet for me and my kids. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, pumpkin seeds. My kids (laughs) love pumpkin seeds, which is so great. Oh, good. Um, good. A question I get a lot of is when people are are looking for supplements, like how to find a high quality one. And I'm sure you get like in our our DMs on Instagram, we get so many messages. And I'm like, I don't know. Ask Noel. (laughs) That's what I tell everybody. (laughs) Ask (laughs) ask a dietitian because this is not my area of expertise. So do you have a few tips for people when they're trying to select you know, supplements and I, all I know is like, look and make sure it has a DIN number, right? Like, that is important. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We want to know that it's like regulated, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Something I've been actually learning a little bit more about is the DHA or the omega-3 supplement world okay. and how some of them come to be. And I'm still doing more research in it, but it does look like even the highest quality brands may not actually come from the highest quality area. Mm. And so what we want to know is that the fish is good quality and it's not just kind of the scrap, right? I like to think of it as like, you don't want the hot dog version of a supplement (laughs) because hot dogs are kind of just whatever is left over, right? Yeah. So a brand that I've been really impressed with, it's it's a Canadian brand. It's called Aqua Omega. Okay. And it's a newer brand and they're expanding and there's other great brands on the market too, but just doing research into like, where did this come from? Like, don't be afraid yeah. to ask questions. In terms of prenatals, definitely there 
is a wide spectrum on the market. And, you know, NFH or Enhanced Fertility, New Chapter, the list goes on. There's, there's others that are great quality on the market. And then I would just avoid like the generic mm -hmm. ones because they're not necessarily looking for quality. They're looking to just say, hey, this is a maternal vitamin, mineral complex, right? We, we really want one that has like that methylated folate, even after you continue yeah. to need folic acid after. And I recommend for moms that are uh, breastfeeding and then become pregnant again, you want to really go up to that a thousand yeah. microgram, right? Because you yeah. need it for, for both children that you're nourishing as well as yourself. In terms of iron, calcium interferes with the absorption of iron. So while it is in these multivites, I usually recommend it as a separate entity. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you know that you're actually we'll going to get it and use what you're taking in. So yeah. I hope that kind of answers. No, no, that's uh, it's really helpful. And I think it just re reiterates that it's there's not an easy answer, right? It's there's you not you have to do your no. research. And yeah, and I, I do think, think that. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think, you know, the, the bottom line is having a really well balanced, nutrient rich diet. Mm -hmm is key. And then supplements are just that they're not a replacement. Exactly. They're a supplement. Yeah, exactly. Always food first. And yeah. sometimes single nutrient supplements will be better because we are literally just filling the holes. Totally. Sometimes the diet is so full of goodness that we just need to fill those holes. One thing to remember with single nutrient supplements is sometimes they aren't just what they say they are. Yeah. So you could have an omega three that has vitamin D in it. Yeah. You're going to have calcium that has magnesium and vitamin D in it. And then you're taking a vitamin D. And before you know it, you have more than what you need of vitamin D. So being yeah. very aware of not just looking at the front, but looking at the back mm -hmm. and understanding what is in here and how does that compare to what I actually need based on recommendations and my diet. And of yeah. course, that's what I do as a dietitian, right? Yeah. Is, is help uh, women work through that. Yeah. No, that's super helpful. Yeah. It's such a blur, hey? Postpartum. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I do remember, and this is a nice segue to our next uh, topic of conversation, is every time I would sit down to breastfeed, I'd be like, yeah. oh, I need a glass of water. Right? Yeah. As soon as I get that baby latched, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so thirsty. <laughs> totally. It's right? true. I remember the exact same thing and be like dying for water. Like somebody please bring me water. Totally. And then my husband's like, why can't you remember? And I'm like, I am, I am growing a human on the outside here. Get me some yeah. water, please. Yeah. You don't think of it until you sit down. And yeah. I also remember being quite hungry after each feed, like okay. even in the middle of the night, I would have a hard time going back to sleep if I didn't grab like a banana yeah. or a bar or something. Not great for dental health, but I needed to sleep. So yeah. that's just what it was. Totally. So yeah, having water like anywhere where you may feed is a good thing. Like have three bottles of water available on the go like one yeah. at your you know nursery feeding chair one in the main area and one in your bedroom or something like that anywhere you might feed you need so much water so when a woman is breastfeeding the quality of the breast milk will not be affected but the quantity will mm -hmm. okay so you still have the same amount of protein carbohydrates and fats the type of fats vary based on your diet but if you're not eating enough or if you're not consuming enough to be well hydrated, then the quantity can be affected. And I'm often asked, I'm sure you are too, how can I increase my breast milk supply? And my first thing is water. Are yeah. you getting enough water? And then food and rest, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. And then there's other things you can talk about. But the hydration piece matters even mm -hmm. for the mom who's not breastfeeding. Yeah. Because again, you've still lost quite a little bit quite a lot of blood. You are busy with baby. It's very easy to forget kind of this simple. And as soon as you are thirsty, you are already down that road of dehydration. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's sometimes Absolutely. hard to even notice those triggers. So having water plentifully around, if you don't love water, I'm not a big fan of adding crystals to it. I'm a big fan of adding actual fruit. Yeah. So cucumber and pineapple, lemon and lime, frozen pomegranates and cherries, fresh strawberries, anything that you can, you can add that fruit at the beginning of the day and then you can change it over at night. Like you can just keep adding the same water to that fruit all day long mm -hmm. and then change it over. So rather than that artificial flavoring, I do recommend going more with, with true, you know, fruit. You get the goodness out of it as well. Sparkling water is fine. It will give you that same hydration because usually there's a bit of sodium in there. So the more we can go with just flat water, a little bit of fruit flavored flat water, the better. Certainly if 
baby isn't affected by you having caffeine, you can have a little bit of coffee or tea. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. Just keeping up with your water, knowing that there's a bit of a diuretic effect there mm-hmm. too. No, absolutely. I think other another little tip is um, some people like drinking out of a straw better, right? Totally. Absolutely. I do. Yeah. I 100% too. agree with I you. I have it in front of me and I'm like, but like I have this giant, you know, like mason jar with a straw yeah. and he's like, why yeah. don't I'm like, I'll drink it more. Absolutely. Totally. I sometimes find even a mason jar over a regular cup I enjoy more. I know. Yeah. Like, so those just little quirks. Novelty, yeah. right? Totally. <laughs> it's like when we cut kids food little and they yeah. eat it versus it's the same food bigger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. Or like I cut the watermelon, you know, for the lunch boxes yes. with a star with a cookie yeah. cutter. Yeah. Gobble it up. And it tastes better that way. Yeah. <laughs> Proven yeah. fact. <laughs> yeah, no hydration. And and people often ask like how much water to drink. I typically say, you know, drink till your make sure your urine is like light yellow in color. Yes. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. And um that you're not feeling thirsty or oh. headachey or fatigued or anything yeah. like that. But yeah, the urine color it it definitely really helps. And and sometimes people say, Well, if I drink so much I have to go to the bathroom all the time and I'm like, mm-hmm. That's the point. That's how your body works. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I know. I know. Oh, well, and you think too about healing, right? Yeah. You want to have like so so our bodies are like, I mean, you think I would know this number, but it's something like eighty percent water, right? Depends on the age, but adults is about sixty percent. There we go. And so our blood vessels, right? We want to have, you know, juicy blood vessels flowing through those those healing, you know, proteins and antibodies and everything to all the to your vulvar tissues and healing. And so you got to stay hydrated to have that really good circulation. Absolutely. It really makes a difference flushing things through. Um, yeah, it's worth it. And when we have more protein, the body does need a bit more water as well. And we are asking the body to have more protein during this healing time yeah. so that the yeah. two coincide. Yeah. I got one of those. So aside, this is not pregnancy related, but when I work at the hospital um, doing addiction service, we have this office way in the back and there's like no access to water. Like the only water is in the bathroom, which I'm not really into drinking. So I have this like giant, you know, those giant things on Amazon, like the water bottle. Yeah. Like that. And, and I just take that with me and I don't make myself drink it during the day, but I just have like a giant jug of water available to me. So even like going on Amazon and getting that, like, days worth what I don't know how much water it's, it's insane I don't recommend necessarily drinking that much water because you can have too much you can overhydrate but yeah you know like like you said having big bottles of water available around your house so that you're not and some of them have like does yours have by like yeah. 6 a.m 7 a.m no. 8 a.m yeah or there's like different words on them and yeah it can be motivating totally yeah just to like instead of that oh I'm too tired I don't want to walk I'll just sit here and be thirsty <laughs> Yeah. So that segues into our last topic we're going to talk about. I'm too tired and we need to rest, Rest. right? Yeah. You know, there are cultures, as I'm sure you know, where for 30 days, like it's literally just mom and baby. Yeah. No one one touches that, right? It's like a sacred area. And in our society, outside of COVID, it's like, when can I come see the baby? And it's, you know, eight hours after they were born kind of thing. can find a, you know, a balance within there. But taking time for rest is so important and it's very easy to feel the pressure of needing to do all the things, especially if you have other little kids around, there's meals and snacks to prep, there's laundry to do, there's dishes to do and advocating, just like we were talking about earlier in terms of nutrition, advocating for what you know that you need because those three months after birth, the fourth trimester, it truly is an extension of pregnancy, but baby's on the outside. Mm-hmm. And so where when you're pregnant, it's going to just go around with you. Now they need you in a different way and you're up at random hours. And so if sleeping in the afternoon is what you need in order to not feel sick to your stomach because you're exhausted, then I encourage new moms as much as possible to try to advocate for that. And I know it's easier said than done of like, oh, sleep when the baby sleeps because there's so much to do. And so it's not oh, necessarily it's so hard all the time, but taking rest where you can, asking for you know a partner or a fellow family member to maybe do one of the feeds either day or night. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's easier to ask for help during the day yeah. and get up in the night. Yeah. Just 
getting rest in, it makes a difference in healing. It makes a difference in mindset. It makes a difference in patience and tolerance and just the ability to think clearly. Because that's very, very hard in that first month. There's so many new things coming at you, right? I mean, you're literally staring at your baby's poo to see if it's the right color and consistency, (laughs) right? And counting this and and sometimes you're pumping and you're breastfeeding or you're you're figuring out how much formula to put in the bottle because you don't want to give too little. Like, yes, and sterilizing the equipment. It's, It's so much. And so asking for rest where needed. I remember when my babies were born there in the NICU and uh, I was really sick after it. We had an, had an emergency C-section and I was really sick after I was throwing up. And eventually I was like able to sit up and pump and all this. And it was day two and my husband was like, I'm putting you in a wheelchair and I'm going to teach you how to sterilize the equipment. Come with me. And I was like, what? What? No, you can do that. And he was like, yes. oh, you need to learn how because I won't always be here. So you need to learn how. You're like, not like, on day two, better. Like, like, no, this isn't, this isn't happening for me, right? It was an early learning of, and he was like, oh, okay. It was an early learning of advocating. So, yeah. like, it is not selfish, no. right? It is not selfish to advocate mm-hmm. because you have these tiny, well, I had two, but you have a tiny human usually relying on you. And so, um, yeah, nutrition, hydration, rest. And as part of that, not having the mindset of getting back to what you were oh my gosh I know I was just thinking about that right like we don't need to go back you are a, you are it is a rebirth of you totally as a woman there is nothing to go back to and therefore there was no need to feel like you need to get out and start walking or running a certain amount of minutes mm-hmm. or any sort of prenatal boot camp right away like just because the six week mark doesn't mean you're ready for the things. And no. so respecting your body, listening to your body, giving time to heal is so important. And if you want to go for a nice like stroll around the block, fine, get that blood moving. That's great. But please, please, please don't feel like you have to have a certain goal of your body in an X period of time. I know. I think, you know, the more... I, I've always said, and I feel very fortunate that I had my kids sort of during my medical training because now I understand. Mm-hmm. I think I, it makes me a better maternity care provider, right? And family. Yeah. But I always said, you know, it takes 10 months, not nine, 10 months to grow a baby. So, yeah. I, like, at minimum, I think you should allow your body those 10 months at a minimum, you know? And, right. and like you said, like, we, it is a rebirth. Like, you're not going back, you know? I, um, I I follow, you know, um, what's her name? I think her name is Sarah as well. Bird's Papaya on She She lives an hour and a half from me. No way. Oh, my gosh. I'm like a little fangirl, right? And there's that infamous picture of her doing a plank with her her stomach, right? And I was doing a plank the other day just in my workout bra. And I looked down and I was like, oh, I have one too, right? And We all do. The skin just... (laughs) And that's just normal. And that is your beautiful body that grew a human. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Our the culture, skin isn't the same. The insides aren't the same. And that's our awesome. brains aren't the same. And it is awesome. Right? Yeah. And I really love that we're having this like movement towards like body positivity and acceptance and a reframing of, you know, what your body should should be like and what, yeah. you know, and normalizing all the changes yes. that can happen to us. One of the analogies that I'll often use with clients is we take a two or three year old toddler, we love them to pieces. Yeah. Right? You love that toddler. Oh my God. Yes. You also are going to do things in terms of discipline and teachings Mm -hmm. that make it so as they grow older into a preschooler and a grade schooler that their behavior is going to change. You're not expecting that your eight-year-old is going to have your two-year-old's behavior. Yeah. So you love them while you use strategies to help them move towards the next thing. Yeah. And I, and I, and I think that works so well for our bodies. We can love and admire what our body is mm-hmm. and still include workouts and healthy eating totally. that helps to serve moving forward to whatever the next step is, whether it's staying the same or whether it's a little bit, you know, different, but it's so important 
for us, for our well being, and also for modeling to this next generation. Yes. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could have generations down the road that hear about the way things once were and think it was crazy? Would, like as crazy totally. as like talking on your cell phone while driving. Totally. Right? Yes. Yeah. So I agree. You know, Sarah's done a great job of that. And I think, you know, we as healthcare professionals can, t- can continue that conversation. Yeah. And I'm really grateful for all the pelvic physiotherapists that are really coming out. Yes. And- and really advocating for rest and appropriate rehabilitation, yes. right? Yes. Um, instead yeah, of just absolutely. that, you know, go for a run at six weeks. They're like, don't go for a run, right? Please don't. Yeah. Please don't. Yeah. yeah. And I went for a run. Kill the rest of weeks. your life to run. <laughs> totally. totally. It's hard. And, and if you want to move your body, there's lots of ways to move your body. I, I got out early and, you know, but I just tell, like, say, you know, let your body be your guide. If you can walk around your block, walk around your block. If you can get halfway down your street and back up, do that, right? Absolutely. I recently had a, had a hysterectomy, as you know. Yes. And uh, I've had to learn to ebb and flow yeah. back into activity as well. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Similar kind of thing. Like, it can look different on the outside. I'm like, oh, feel fine again. Yeah. But I've learned that on the inside, there's still healing. Mm-hmm. So I, I've been put back in that postpartum kind of zone a little bit in terms of internal healing and it's a good reminder yeah. as they work well, with women I know and you think about like people who have like cardiac surgery or orthopedic surgery yeah. they all go through rehabilitation right and mm-hmm. we have people who are having a cesarean section has major abdominal surgery and they're like okay and go home and take care of a tiny human and rest a little bit and then you'll be fine right like and don't lift more than 10 pounds but your baby's eight pounds and the car seats however yeah. yeah. so it's um (laughs) yeah totally right yeah yeah I think I'm it's really exciting that the time that we're going through and the the shift that we're seeing towards understanding that the complexity that is you know postpartum and that is I totally agree yeah Yeah. well thank you so much Noelle thank you for having me it's always great to chat with you (laughs) it was a total pleasure so I will link your no do you is your course open right now or what's happening it's evergreen it's evergreen. it's evergreen. I'll be doing another push for it in the next little bit again. I did one in January okay. and then I thought maybe I would do one in March, but yeah, my course is, course is um, not push, but like uh, let people know about it. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Talk about it all the time, I guess yeah. is the better way to say it. Yeah. But yeah. So it runs through from pre-pregnancy, just a little bit in there, lots of focus on pregnancy and then some focus on the fourth trimester as well. Yeah called Your Nourished Pregnancy. And yeah, I have quite a few women that have enrolled in it. I've had some positive feedback about it. Good. Awesome. Well, we'll put a link to that. I was asking because I said, I will put a link to it in the show notes. Perfect. And then if you're okay, I'll put a link to some of those supplements that you that you recommend. Yes. And, yes. Um, and then we also, Kids, Kids Star? No. Kids Star. Kids Star. Uh, Kids yeah. Star. Kids Kids Star. Star. Yeah, yeah, I have their iron. Yeah. I take their iron. <laughs> Me too. It's the iron I take as well. I absolutely love it. And full circle is good too. They wouldn't come to my mind during this, but they're good as well. So I'll send you over some links that you can pop into the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. People are always looking for recommendations and I'm happy to share ones that that we we trust and believe in. So yeah. Kidstar has a good DHA as well. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have a DHA combined vitamin D. So yeah, I'll send you over all those links. They're in my course and so it's really easy for me to just do it like a quick copy and paste over but thanks for having me thank you thanks for listening make sure to check out our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca and to sign up for our community for weekly bump blasts make sure to check us out on instagram or facebook at she.found.motherhood And head on over to your favorite podcast app and leave a review and a five-star rating. If you enjoyed this podcast, take a pic of yourself listening to it and share it on social. Make sure to tag us on it so we know to keep making them.